Grant Hill here on the Rich Eyes. What's up, Grant? How you been? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing better for talking to you. So much to discuss with you. Um, let's start with Duke, uh, Grant. Um, the word is that Coach K called the kids to the house and basically said uh, uh, he's upset with the way they're comporting themselves and whatever's going on behind the scenes. Can't wear any Duke gear, and no uh, access to the locker room. Have, does this sound like Coach K to you, Grant? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I, I'll say this: when you when when you play when I played there at Duke for four years, uh, during that span, sometimes the motivational techniques uh, that he uses sort of are recycled. So what was done my freshman year may come back around my senior year, um, but I've never heard this particular one, and I don't know if it's totally true. I mean, you know, there's a lot of reports; nothing's official. I'm sure I'll find out at some point if it were true. But, um, you know, look, Coach K is demanding. And he demands um, the best from everybody, his players, his staff, uh, his administrative assistants from himself. And uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I know it's got to be a real difficult situation. You have, you know, a team that has a lot of expectations, um, a team that, you know, has a lot of talent, and then Coach, right when – the difficult part of the season, the ACC season begins, you know, he's out with an injury. And so, um, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me uh, that, you know, whether it's true or not, it just doesn't surprise me that he's trying to light a fire, trying to get these guys um, to play to their best. And, um, you know, it's, um, I, you know, I was there for four years, so I, I saw a whole lot. And, uh, you know, he, he demands excellence from everybody. And, uh, and so if you don't do it, then, you know, there's, there's repercussions. What do you think he's doing with Grayson Allen, Grant, to try and get him back on the straight and narrow here or on the straight and narrow in the people's minds for the first time in his career? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, I think a couple things. One, look, I mean, what, what Grayson has done, um, you know, it, it's it's not good. And I think, you know, everyone knows it's a mistake. I think the kid knows it as well. Um, you know, I think he's not a bad kid. And I think that's the thing that from spending some time with him, interacting with him, he's a great kid, great family, his mom and dad. Um, you know, he's not a guy that is like, you know, Christian Leitner, who I played with, like he played that villain character and he loved it. Like he thrived in it. And, you know, this kid's not like that. This is a different kind of kid. And so uh, it's been unfortunate. You know, I, I don't know exactly. I mean, I, I do know Coach and I do know his, his, his support group that, they're doing everything possible to try to help the kid and, 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 and you know, have the, the proper resources so he can not only do well on the court but conduct himself professionally and do well off the court, do well in school. Um, but it's been a, a sort of odd occurrence, if you will, the, the, the last couple years. And, uh, and hopefully for his sake uh, and for the program's sake that, you know, that Grayson will, will, will no longer have a situation like that and just be able to focus in on playing basketball. But I do think because of last year and this year, he's going to be a target, you know, from other to other players trying to, to you know, to, to, to go goad him into doing uh, or, or acting out or doing something wrong to, to, to get him off his game. And then the crowd, you know, the crowd's going to be brutal on the road. They're going to boo him. They're going to get on him. And, uh, and so, you know, I hope he can, can, you know, handle that and deal with that because I think because of the circumstances, uh, he will see that at least for the remainder of the season. Grant Hill, Turner Sports, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Your colleagues on the NBA on uh, TNT inside the NBA had quite a spirited conversation about LeBron's comments uh, saying that the team's top-heavy and essentially saying in the press and the media that the roster is not up to snuff in Cleveland. What would you make of those comments, Grant? Well, you know, I, um, I I did see the comments. I saw Charles and Kenny uh, criticize him. I think Shaq defended LeBron. Um, you know, look, the goal is to win a championship. I think Dan Gilbert, of, of all the owners, has gone above and beyond, willing to spend money, uh, willing to go into the tax, and uh, and, and really, you know, uh, do what no other owner, at least, is, is doing at this current time in terms of spending to have a great team. Uh, I, I know there's frustration. They haven't played great. You know, not having a backup uh, is difficult. It may require more from LeBron. 
Um, and, you know, I, I'm sure it's, it's a need that, you know, everyone is looking at and, and hoping to address. But, you know, to me, and this is just my way, I would, if I were in that position, and I was, you know, at one point in my career sort of the franchise player, you know, I, I think that's something that you discuss internally. You know, it's something um, that's discussed with your basketball ops department, maybe ownership. And, 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 you know, at least have those internal discussions about the direction of the team, which happens, which happens all the time uh, with great players and organizations. And to go to the media really just kind of sends a message to me the, the level of frustration and, and certainly how divided they are there. And, but, you know, I, I, I prefer the way I did things and the way I would prefer as a teammate is just, you know, because it kind of sends a message to the rest of your guys that you're not good enough, you know. And and uh, and, and so, look, LeBron's a great player. He's been a great leader, a great teammate. And I know he'd be able to sort of, you know, make everyone feel comfortable. But it is a, a, another distraction that is probably unwanted at a time when the team is struggling a little bit trying to figure, out, figure things out. So, uh, you know, for, for Cleveland fans and, and for – you know, the team and the expectations and, and the greatness that they displayed last year, you know, you hope that they're able to figure it out. But, I mean, look, you know, you lose Della Vadova, you know, J.R. Smith, who played a huge role for that team. Uh, you know, you, those guys are gone or, or injured. Uh, Timothy Mozgov as well. And so it's a different team. And, uh, and sometimes, you, you know, a player – not just a role in terms of what that player does like as a point guard or a backup point guard, but sometimes a personality really fits with a team. And, and when you extract that personality from the team, it has an effect. And, uh, and maybe that to a degree is what's happening right now with the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James. In the minute I have with you left, Grant, uh, where, do you, where do you land on what's going on with Chicago where um... – where a veteran and Dwayne Wade and Jimmy Butler come out and say that the young guys don't take it nearly as hard as they should, and then uh, Ray John Rondo comes back on Instagram saying this this should be in house, um, and it leaves a bit of a mess. Do you think um, uh, Dwayne was uh, selfish, or 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 a veteran who's uh, who, who's just pounded his chest in a manner that he feels is the only way left? You know, I mean, look, I, I, Dwayne Wade's a champion. Dwayne uh, has a, a bigger great. Uh, heart and, and, and great intent, um, you know, but I, I, I do sometimes wonder, and, and players do it all the time, sometimes calling guys out in the media. I think you have to be real about that team and their ex- – I mean, that team was rebuilding. The team had, uh, uh, you know, Gasol and Noah and Derrick Rose and, and, and went for it last year. They fired the coach the year before, and it didn't work out, and they went in a whole different direction. I think they brought in, you know, Rondo and Wade kind of as window dressing uh, and big names. But, I mean, look, the team is going through a rebuilding process. It's transitioning. I think the, anyone's expectations for them to be, you know, an elite team, maybe squeak into the playoffs. And so frustration is mounting. And uh, I think as a leader, you want to try to set the tone. You want to, you know, you know, hold people accountable, but do it internally. And that's just like my style. That's the way I would have done it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think, you know, Rondo, I appreciate, I appreciate for a lot of reasons what he put out there because that kind of culture and that kind of environment that he was describing with the Celtics uh, is the right way. And, um, you know, but sometimes losing, sometimes frustration, maybe in Wade's case, he's getting a little bit older he didn't make the all-star. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into to someone's, um, you know, willingness and desire to speak out. And um, But the bottom line is that really helping the young guys and helping them become the better players that they can become, you know, it remains to be seen. Look, they may turn the corner, and it may have been the right thing to do. Well, you know, time will tell. But I definitely know that's not something or how I would have approached it. I would have liked to have kept that in-house and deal with that internally. All right, Grant, thanks for the time. Before before I let you go, you, you got a Super Bowl 51 prediction? What do you think is going to happen? In the you know one? what? I'm going with the Falcons. I, I'm uh, I'm in Atlanta with the Hawks, and okay. uh, I'm true to Atlanta, so I'm sticking with the Falcons. They're going to upset the New England Patriots. Okay. Thank you, Grant. Appreciate the two cents right there. We'll have you back on soon, hopefully. Okay, thanks, Rich. Oh, love having you on. That's uh, at Real Grand Hill 33. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.